just two guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Shot on Score North and scorenorth.com. I wasn't passing the ball. I was taking a shot. I was going to live with whether I lost us the game or, you know, we won. And uh, I ended up hitting the shot. But, man, like I said, man, it's all Nikhil. Um, Nikhil, big shots in the, in the uh, overtime. Mike Conley, big shots. Rudy, like uh, my teammates played great tonight, man. Um, I know on the stat sheet it looked like I had an s- exceptional game, but they, they won a game for us. All right. I'm going to do it. I know they're still down 3-1, to one, Dex. I'm going to do it. All right. I'm waving the flag. I got the shoes off. Oh, he's got the shoes off. I got the shoes off. Shoes off. Let's go. Wolves in seven, baby. Wolves in seven. It's happening. Tried to tell you guys before the series. Everybody laughed at old Macadac in his hot tub. Wolves in seven. Yeah, still alive. It is still alive. I heard that chant toward like we had the game on obviously towards towards bedtime last night, and my fiance was like coming in out of sleep. She's like, "What are they? What are they yelling?" And I was like, "They're yelling wolves in seven. Wolves in seven. Get up, come on, come on, let's go. Wolves in seven. You guys may be wondering, by the way, your Minnesota sports with Mackie and Judd here. Where's Judd? This is weird. Why is Judd not here? I think this is actually the first day he's taken off legitimately in four years. I can't remember him taking it unless it's like around Christmas or something. I don't think he I legitimately don't. Certainly since the three of us have been doing the YouTube version of this show, this might be the first. It's the 30th wedding anniversary for this old gads. And so Mm -hmm. um, they're 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 doing a trip around the state and going to some of their favorite spots. But I can't remember another off day for him outside of the fact that. The one time where he got his uh, appendix, appendix removed. Yeah, that, that happened. Um, I think he might have taken a Friday off two summers ago. Like, no, the, the classic, uh, I think you even have it here, the Livia picture where Judd is in his suit. Oh, there was a wedding, stage. yeah. I yes. think he took that Friday off to, like, get down to wherever he was going in Iowa. I was texting him yesterday during the Wild game. Of course, he's, like, texting me notes of classic Judd, just frustrated as all, as all hell watching the Wild <laughs> lose a playoff game. Uh, and I said, how is, you know, well, how's Dawn doing? Oh, she's fine. I bought 48 spotted cows at the gas station. That's what, what? I bought 48, two cases of spotted cow. She's drinking champagne. We're all having fun. Just so I think pounding okay. spotted cow. 48. So consider today a load management day, a rare load manage, uh, <laughs> management day. For Judd Zolgab, but we've got some business to conduct here. Now on Mackie and Judd. You wanted better charts that you could see the fine print on. The pie chart of praise. You should be singing his praises. The Rock knows how you feel about pie. So you, Declan, and AJ Fredrickson filling in for Judd were on Judd's hockey show duty last night, a live stream on the Scornorth YouTube channel. Uh, myself and Kyle Tige, who is doing Flagrant Howls the last two games from courtside. Nice. Like Alex Rodriguez is walking by and stuff. He was doing it from the arena. So I was on Wolves duty. I'm assuming you, well, I mean, the games were kind of staggered. I did watch a chunk of the wild game, so I can help you a little bit with your pie chart. Um, so uh, you probably saw at least chunks of this game. Feel free saw, to interrupt and dive in whenever you want here. I saw the fourth quarter. I saw most of all of the fourth quarter by the time I was done with wild stuff. So I got all that in that highs and lows, roller coaster, meltdowns, win probability charts going left and right. It was, Dude, uh, it the was nuts. Fourth quarter was, if you haven't seen any Timberwolves basketball all year, <laughs> The fourth quarter was a great summation of the last six months of Wolves basketball. They look they look like the best team in the NBA for five minutes, and then they blow a 12-point lead in two minutes, and then overtime, and then Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns fouls out. Like, all of it was on display in fourth quarter overtime. But I have a five-slice pie chart of praise for a Timberwolves season-saving victory in game four. All righty. And we're, usually we start with the smaller chunks and work our way up. Mm-hmm. I don't think we can do that today. I'm going to give you a 70% slice of pie. 70% of my pie. That's a lot of pie. And we're just going to start with Anthony Edwards. Third consecutive 30-point playoff game, which is the first time in franchise history that that's ever happened. Kevin Garnett never had 30 points in three consecutive playoff games. Ant has now moved into second to- uh, second place all-time for 30-point playoff games by a guy who's yet to turn 22. It's him and LeBron. That have, I think LeBron had eight, and Ant now has five or six 30 point playoff games before turning 22 years old. He just passed Kobe. And and Kyle and I were talking about this, and you can go find these post game shows 
uh, from yesterday on the Score North YouTube channel and the Mackie and Judd and Judd's Hockey Show and Flagrant House podcast feeds. But I've been trying to contextualize why Ant is so special and sort of because there's some unquantifiable things when you're watching a special player, whether it's Kaprizov for the Wild or in this case, Ant with the Timberwolves. And I've come up with sort of three different categories or reasons why he, I think, is a franchise savior type player. Okay. And why maybe others that we've seen have have not been. And and tell me what you think about this. But the mm-hmm. the first category is fearlessness. He gets into these big games. And now sometimes there's been some weird clunkers like the Lakers playing game where he goes three for 17 and he looked a little hesitant. And he's got to get rid of some of that stuff. But you get into this series, you got, in some cases, the Denver crowd is 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 raining down on you. Or in this case... There's a nervous energy inside Target Center. You've blown a 12-point lead. Your season's on the line. And it's he's like Neo in the Matrix, man. Like, everything else is moving fast, and it's slipping away, and he just calmly dribbles to the wing, rocks the defender back and forth, steps back, cashes a game-winning shot. He just, he's so unbothered by circumstances, and he's 21 years old, so fearlessness and just being unbothered in huge moments, I think is, is I guess the first of three reasons why I think he's a franchise savior. I guess two things. Uh, what I really like about him is when he has the ball and the, and the fearlessness nature that you're talking about, like I wish he would drive more. I wish he would just take the ball, cross over the guy and drive to the hoop more. Cause he can absolutely do that. And sometimes, which we saw in the last two minutes and he talked about it off the clip, on the top where maybe I shouldn't have taken those threes. I almost sabotaged things a little bit, some bad possessions, but at the same time, he has the confidence. He's going to, he wants the shot. He yes. wants the shot. And even though no might, excuses it, too, yes. like he, he just, he doesn't, I, it's, it's he on me. And if it that. fails, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it failing. Not in yeah, like he, a complacent he way. Wants, but just. He wants the ball, which I love. And I think that's, what's so impressive to see with him is that he wants the ball, whether it's the right shot or wrong shot. Yeah. I would, I wish the dude, cause he can just go get to the rack like anyone else. I wish he would do that a little bit more, but that fewest nature I think is awesome. And it's, that's hard to quantify to your point. That's not a box score statistic. That is a complete body language and eye test thing that you can see with him. Yeah. It's like the moment gets bigger and the lights get brighter and he doesn't always succeed but he's there for that moment always. Yeah. And he loves that moment. And you can see him even between timeouts and dead balls. He's just intently talking with Conley and intently talking with Gobert about a defensive switch or whatever it may be. Uh, number two, in terms of just trying to quantify the Anthony Edwards experience and, and what it means for the Timberwolves leadership, great leaders, shoulder blame and deflect criticism. And now sometimes I remember Andrew Luck when he would get up to a podium and had like a rib sticking through his skin and he in the offensive line is just a bunch of idiots. Right. And he would get up there and be like, I need to be better <coughs> coughing up blood. Yeah. It's like, No, you need your offensive line to be better. So that sometimes it's sometimes you have to just tell it like it is. But Anthony Edwards fits into this category of a, a, he's a 21 year old kid who has leadership instincts that you can't really teach. He's up there last night. And you heard some of it in the clip there. He spends the entire post game showering teammates with praise. Like this dude just dropped thirty some points, a game winning three point shot. He he took the game over when it was in doubt in the fourth quarter, and he's up there praising Nikhil Alexander Walker for hitting a couple threes in overtime. Mike Conley, he praised Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert. And then when it came down to, but what about you, Anthony? I mean, my God, look at the game you just had. And he says, I almost quote, I almost shot us out of the game. With three bad three pointers, mm-hmm. and I, I don't think it's I means obviously some of it is he's doing it strategically to pump his teammates, but that's an instinctual thing that you can't teach someone how to pump your teammates up in a productive way, how to shoulder blame and and deflect or how to yeah shoulder blame and de, and deflect praise. And I just I love it, man. I think he's and he's only going to grow in that regard for the next three, four, five, six years too. And yeah, I love that he was giving everyone else props like. Nick- you know, Alexander Walker has been phenomenal for them. Um, and he had some big shots in overtime and, and, and this isn't, this isn't to be like a backhanded compliment to cat, but like when cats like, Oh, it's like a movie. It's like a movie. And we we're beating the rockets, wherever the hell that was towards the end of the regular the, season, yeah, the Hawks, like, but yeah. The Haw- yeah, but come on, man. Like this is, this is a little bit bigger and the season's on the line here. You either win or you're, you're done for the next four or five months. So I think his, his leadership qualities are humongous. And, and you can see that with how he talks in the post game presser. 
And number three, just contextualizing why he is this type of franchise changing player. The best way I can explain it, and I, I tried on Flagrant Howls last night. It's I think it's, you know, you tell me if I'm explaining this in the right way, but it's his ability to control an arena with his play and personality. Some players have this ability in basketball to create a tsunami. The environment just starts spilling over, right? It's just the crowd's going crazy. It's like a freight train coming at the opposing team. It's a 6-0 run. It's a 10-2 run. But it, but it feels like more than that. And Kobe had it. Kevin Garnett had it for stretches with the Timberwolves. LeBron has it. Steph Curry has it. It's it's one player in a barn of 20,000 people with a really good opponent, and nothing can stop them. And everyone gets behind it. I mean, it's like, it's like you are the conductor of a 19,000-piece orchestra. The fans, your teammates, the opposing team. All of them are on a string sort of tied to your play and your actions and your personality. And he has it, man. It's like a conductor, right? Like a musical conductor, not like a train mm-hmm. conductor, which I guess you can make both comparisons. But yeah. he's a musical conductor, right? Like he's got, there's a ton of things in an orchestra or in a band that have to make one big sound, right? You and I are big drumline fans. We love drum. I think we could, <laughs> it would jut out, you and I could talk drumline and wrestling, I think, for the, for the next three hours. I, I don't think our audience would love it as much as we do. But you have to have one band, one sound, right? Just like the Wolves. There's there's a bunch of different pieces here. And that crowd at Target Center, which is amped up, and then the little nerves kick in a little bit, like classic Minnesota sports moments about to happen here. They're up with they're up twelve with, with two minutes to go and they blow the lead, but everything's cool, calm, and collected. And, and also he just I, does this. Like, yeah. you know, stop. And stop playing. Done. I got it. And, yep. and I always look at like in times of crisis, like uh in, in an airplane, I think I've talked about this. Like if the turbulence is bad, which is normal on a flight, how are the flight attendants reacting? If the flight attendants start to panic, now I'm panicking. Now I am scared. See, Anthony Carl Edwards, Anthony Towns tends that. to be the panicky flight attendant sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ant's the guy that comes in, you know, he'll come and <laughs> calm down the children. It's going to be okay. Listen, if I have to fly this plane, I'll fly this plane, but we're going to land this plane. It's going to be fine. Yeah. No, I like that analogy. I also just kind of love, you know, I I feel like I've had a lot of people the last few days because I've been, again, really hard on Carl Anthony Towns, who, and we'll get to him. He actually, he has contributed in a positive way largely the last couple of games, and we'll get to him, but. You know why, Mackie? Why are you so hard on Carl Anthony Towns? Why, why are you? Why, like, why do you criticize him but not this, th- that, and the other? Well, I think I'm going to answer that with sort of an Anthony Edwards uh, angle first, and I think you'll sort of see what I mean, like, and, and why I get frustrated with Carl Anthony Towns. Anthony Edwards, I just love what he represents as a player. I love how he represents Minnesota. I love getting behind a hardworking, fearless, young player like him that has upside and potential that he's going to still tap into. But I, like he's just the type of player that I want to represent Minnesota, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Hard-nosed, hardworking, fearless. Yeah, he complains to the officials sometimes, but he's mostly just locked in to most of these big games and ready to dominate with no excuses. And then when the game is over... Again, he's shouldering some of the blame and he's deflecting the credit. Like everything about the way he plays and goes about his business from a basketball perspective, I just love what he represents. And I and I it, it makes me feel good that he's going to be around hopefully if they don't screw it up royally, which there's a whole discussion about that to be had, you know, for the next decade. And this franchise, too, has had a bunch of different number one overall picks, number two top three draft picks, right, that have just fizzled. Whether the, whether the talent's been there or the mental part hasn't been there, Anthony Edwards was a number one overall draft pick, right? Um, and everyone was kind of confused. Who's going to be the number one overall pick here? This isn't a consensus number one situation. And it com- becomes Anthony Edwards, and then he's now the face of the Timberwolves, right? Like, mm-hmm. he's still so young. Um, and his potential is still there, and there's that drive. It's not like Andrew Wiggins, I think, raw, like just coming out as a talent product, was a much better player than Anthony Edwards, at least hype-wise, when they were drafted. The expectation was, oh, this is one of the next superstars in the NBA. Well, it wasn't all there mentally, and there there, there wasn't just all the pieces in together. Anthony Edwards has the work ethic. He has the talent, too, where now you're starting to see it come together, and rightfully so, a franchise who has wanted a superstar player to be that person for the longest time, basically, since Kevin Garnett left, it's Anthony Edwards. And and that's what I think is so cool to see. And that's the hardest thing to find in the NBA. It's And that's mm-hmm. why even if, if they get, let's say they get beat by 23 points or whatever, they just get blown out 
in game five and the season's over. Anthony Edwards emerging on this level in these playoffs with this spotlight is more important than the result of the series. And again, I, I, at some point you have to win the series, but finding this version of Anthony Edwards is going to be more fruitful for you long-term than, than like if he played like crap and you somehow grinded out a win, but it's with, you know, a 37 year old Mike Conley. And so like, the fact that he's the centerpiece of this, they haven't had someone like this, like you said, since Kevin Garnett. We've had some false starts, guys that we thought or hoped would be that with Kevin Love and Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Town. Turns out those guys are more complimentary players. Uh, but I'll just say, like, if they lose by 20 tomorrow night, fans can still rest easy that, hey, going forward, this is a major, major beacon for the franchise. But on the flip side, if I'm Denver... I think Den- I mean, Denver should be pretty heavily favored in Game 5. I think they s- mostly just, like, sleepwalked through the first half yesterday. So, like, don't get me wrong. Denver probably wins Game 5. But if they don't, this thing gets weird for the Nuggets. If they if they mm-hmm. go—now we go back to Minnesota for Game 6. You can do some mental gymnastics here to sort of put a lot of pressure on Denver. I don't know how much they actually feel. But Game 5, get by winning Game 4, you are sort of free-rolling at this point. There's really not that much pressure on the Timberwolves. If Jokic gets into foul trouble or if someone twists an ankle or something, you know, crazy things could happen if the Wolves sneak out a win in game five. So I'll just I'll just leave that there. That's me being a homer, but I'll just leave that there. Last thing on Ant, too. I mean, the dude's 21 years old. Worst case, he already has now 10 playoff games under his belt, right? They had or mm-hmm. 11 playoff games under his belt. He, he had, They went to six last year against Memphis. They're going to five in Denver. There could be more. And he's 21. So when he's going to turn 22, you know, shortly before next regular season starts, he already has some playoff games under his belt. And I know in Minnesota, we're always looking for some type of optimism, op- some type of half full. Well, I mean, at least he's got some playoff games, but I do think that matters. I don't think that that's yes. just a complete meaningless, um, a classic narrative in Minnesota sports. He's going to be 22 years old. He has been to 10 plus playoff games at this point. It's a good sign for him. He knows what that's like now. And now as he grows into his not even mid 20s yet, he already knows what it's like to have bright lights on him. And not only that, but a step above that, too, he's sort of figuring out within his first 10 or 11 playoff games how to navigate them and be the best player on the floor and win them and get his teammates involved. I feel like sometimes it takes you 15, 20, 30, 40 playoff games before players, you know, now I'm 25, 26, now I have kind of sort of figured out how to do this. Now, at some point, this team led by him is going to have to navigate winning an actual series and then winning another series. And that's a whole, that's a whole nother step as well. But yeah. So Anthony Edwards, 70% of the pie charts of praise. The rock knows how you feel about pie. I'm going to give 10% to president of basketball operations, Tim Connolly. All right. For the Mike Conley, Nikhil Alexander Walker trade that continues to pay dividends. So, Alexander Walker had the two huge threes in overtime. He plays with big-time energy. He has stepped into the starting lineup of a playoff series here. And he's mostly, you know, he's, he's not your best player, but he's he's just been giving you quality minutes, 20, 25, 30 minutes, stepping in for uh, the injured Jade McDaniels. And Mike Conley, he's just, he's everything that sort of we talked about when the trade was made. He is an adult in the room. He's a professional floor general. There's a great clip. I retweeted this. If you want to see a great clip from last night's game, just go to at Phil Mackey on Twitter. It's like a 10-second clip, and um, it's middle of the fourth quarter. The Wolves are trying to blow this thing open, which they did, and then they blew the lead, and then they went to overtime. But at the time, it was a key possession. They were up by six, up by eight, something like that. It was the cat and one layup where he flexed in the corner, and the crowd yeah. went crazy, and they wind up with an 11-point lead. So at the beginning of that play, Mike Conley, so Mike Conley's dribbling at the top of the key, and Cat was about to come up to start the action with a pick and roll. He's going to come up and set the screen. Conley holds his hand up and says, wait. He's dribbling. He holds his hand up and says, wait. Then he looks over calmly uh, at Austin Rivers to his right, and he gives him the, okay, you, you come here, actually. So Austin Rivers comes over, sets the first screen, and I'm going to get wonky on you here, Dex. Okay. So from an X's and O's perspective, Austin Rivers coming over. He was guarded by Jamal Murray. Austin Rivers comes over, sets the first screen, causing a switch. Michael Porter Jr., who's much bigger, Mm -hmm. and Jamal Murray. So Austin Rivers then... I'm sorry. Actually, I want to say... uh, I want to say Porter was not... 
Porter was on uh, Rivers, and it's and so the 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 screen and roll action switched those two guys. Right. And so now at the top of the key, defending pick and roll, I'm butchering this, but the point is, he sets the first screen so that you can get an advantageous matchup, and then it right. winds up with Michael Porter Jr. and Nikola Jokic at the top of the key on the cat screen, and so Cat then slips through. There's the two big guys are at the top of the key. There's nobody tall underneath the basket except Jamal Murray is like trying to defend. And Cat slips the screen, gets underneath. He's got Jamal Murray nipping at his ankles and he gets an easy bucket, gets fouled. But it was Mike Conley's vision. Hey, let's set the first screen, create the switch. And then Cat comes in with the second screen and there's a huge mismatch underneath. And boom, they get the biggest bucket of the night to that point. Like stuff like that, that. I don't know. D'Lo just wasn't operating on that level. He wasn't Mm-mm. thinking as a chess player on that level. And look, Connolly's 35 years old. He's a playoff vet, uh, 77 playoff games in his in his NBA career. And he's been awesome all, also in these four games. Uh, the dude's shooting 51% from the floor. He's hitting his three-pointers. And he's a professional point guard here, okay? He's not going to be a guy that... Uh, he's not Allen Iverson. We're not in the air anymore where point guards are just taking things over like they used to necessarily. But that's what the Wolves need. They have Anthony Edwards, who's clearly their star and their shooting guard, and he can be point ant sometimes. Carl Anthony Towns is still a great complimentary piece. There's some great supplemental pieces on this Wolves roster. You just need a guy to kind of facilitate everything. And he's a professional dude who has been to so many different playoff games with Memphis, with Utah, now with Minnesota. That stuff matters here, where D'Lo probably wants his, right? He wants some ISO. He wants the big shot. He wants to try to take the game over. Mike Connolly at 35 years old knows, hold on. Let me let me survey the whole roster here. Let me look at the landscape. I can see this pick and roll. I can initiate a switch. Those things are huge. Yeah, he's just like his his first objective is to get everyone else going. It's to it's to make sure that the right action is happening. Now, the Wolves get out of that sometimes and it's mind numbing. It's like the ball will just stop and Anthony Edwards is guilty of that sometimes, but but when they're when they're in it and they're and they're doing the right things and moving the ball. All right, three more slices of pie. Uh presented by our friends at Underdog. If you're looking to make Playoff season, even more fun. And golf major season. Underdog is here to help you sweat. I got a nice uh, note from a listener yesterday that said, hey, Wild and Wolves are playing today. It's it's game four for uh, for the Wolves and then the Wild. And I'd like to make some bets here. I'd like to put on a little bit of a sweat here while I'm watching the Wild and then I watch the Wolves. You can do that underdog fantasy. You can combine some prop bets. Why don't you take uh, Anthony Edwards over points, for God's sakes, at this point? I think it was 25 and a half going into the game. And why, nah. don't you, uh, why don't you why don't you why don't you parlay that with maybe some saves with Philip Gustafson? There's plenty of options at Underdog Fantasy. Fantasy football and fantasy sports never end at Underdog Fantasy. Join with promo code SCORE. New users get a hundred dollar bonus when you use promo code SKOR. Go download the Underdog Fantasy app. A shout out to our friends at EcoFun as well. Old Macadac hopped on a scooter, one of the the, nice. the city sort of scooters yesterday. But if you want to get like a real adult scooter here. You can save $300 off the total price of a new Yamaha Zuma 125 fuel-injected scooter. Lowest price ever. You can uh, you can choose black or blue. They're both in stock, ready to ride home. Also, when it comes to scooter life, you can, you can save a lot of money on gas. 100 to 120 miles per gallon on scooters at EcoFun. No interest financing on all scooters for up to one year. I know you and I are both big uh, North Loop and that side of area town. I've taken a scooter to work here before. I've done that. You just you hop across Stone Arch Bridge. You cut through Dinky Town. You take a little back road, some bike great paths. Call. That, that, that might be my play, actually, Write on a down. nice day in June. Do it. Do it. EcoFun if you want to get into a uh, high-level scooter game. All right. 10% of this pie to Carl Anthony Towns. Right? When we criticize Towns, I think it's warranted. There were some things to criticize last night. Of course, he couldn't help himself. Fouls out again. Just like he gets so handsy. And at the, at the end, now I'm criticizing him, even though I'm going to praise him in a second. He fouls out and he acts like it's the worst call in the history of the NBA. It's like, dude, he literally shoved Nikola Jokic in the back on a post up. Like, yeah, you're eighth year in the league, man. But his, aggress- his aggressiveness early on in that game, getting to the free throw line as much as he did, uh, had the huge and one that we talked about in the fourth quarter. All of those things were very important to the Wolves winning that game. Um, I think considering that he's had eight clunkers in 18 career playoff and playing games, I think this qualifies as a non-clunker. We're looking for positive contributions. No longer are we looking for him to be the franchise savior. 
the, the ball should not be running through him on a regular basis in key moments. We, we know that. And so he found a way to contribute for chunks last night. Um, you know, they actually made a couple of their runs when he wasn't on the court, but he was a positive impact. 10% of my pie chart. Last yeah, I think a non-clunker is probably the best way to summarize it. He wasn't um, the the superstar player and and didn't take the game over necessarily, but he had some quality minutes. Obviously, the big and one that we thought that was going to put the game away. I know it didn't end up going that way, but there were some moments there where you thought, okay, this isn't shipwrecking him. He's he's taking the ball. He's getting some big shots. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. A couple turnovers, of course, you don't want to see him fouling out, but mostly. I thought it was a better game for Towns, and you're going to need more of that version of Carl Anthony Towns than the clunkers we've seen from the Memphis and early on in this series against Denver, too. Yep. Uh, two more slices here. 5%. I'm going to say it to the uh, co-heavyweight champs, Kyle Anderson and Rudy Gobert, <laughs> who are coexisting very well together after their spat. Now, Kyle Anderson got smacked in the face some friendly fire by Anthony Edwards, and he's, I believe, seeing a face doctor today. So... Just dude, put a put a Rip Hamilton face mask on him and send him out there. You can't afford to. I mean, the rotation's already razor thin. So if if there's any way he can play, even with like a fractured cheekbone. But last night, Kyle Anderson had eleven six and five with a couple steals. He was just a calming presence. He had a a really weird stretch where he did turn the ball over twice in like yeah. twenty seconds. But outside of that, he was really good. And then Gobert, you know, it looks clunky sometimes. He's uh, not very coordinated inside, and sometimes he's just a frustrating player to watch. But he helped the Wolves win the rebounding battle last night, and uh, and he was mostly a positive force in that game. So 5% to Kyle Anderson, Rudy Gobert. And here's 5%, the, the last remaining 5%, to the presence of big brother Kevin Garnett. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if you saw this. I did. He's been tweeting more about the Timberwolves lately. And he tweeted last night, troops on your MF back, Ant-Man, keep fighting, hashtag wolves. Now, I have heard, okay, a little little mini scoop for you here, Dex. Okay, all right, all right. Burying this 27 minutes into an episode. I have heard that KG and Mark Laurie have gotten together at some point in the last several months and that there is at least a process of trying to make amends with Kevin Garnett here. I don't know all the specifics and the details, but I think there's a reason why KG feels good about tweeting Timberwolves things now. I think hmm. I think we're on the path to getting KG back in the good graces of the organization. And I also think this is just sort of speculation on my part, educated speculation. I think KG feels kind of a spiritual basketball connection to Anthony Edwards. And he, you know, when KG came back for that last stint with the Wolves, he did play with Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns when they were like 19 or 20 years old. But those guys just, those guys are kind of betas. You know, those yeah. guys aren't, they're good players. They're good role players. I think Towns at some point is going to, like, there's going to be a second act to his career, just like Kevin Love and Andrew Wiggins. And maybe it's with the Timberwolves where he kind of settles into a role on a winning team. But But Kevin Garnett hasn't had, in the 20 years since, you know, the last time he led the Wolves to the playoffs hasn't really had that that spiritual basketball little brother in a Timberwolves uniform, and I th I think he feels that with Anthony Edwards. I think he feels like this is the guy that can finally carry this organization, like I did for you know ten or twelve years. So, so something interesting to watch there with with Kevin Garnett. I like it. Yeah, I mean. As a, as a kid growing up as a Minnesota sports fan during the peak of that KG runs, and I know a lot of them were highlighted, unfortunately, by the first round exit. I mean, he's one of the best and most polarizing athletes in my lifetime. Um, obviously won an NBA MVP, and I know Glenn Taylor and him don't really see eye to eye, but I love that Mark Laurie and, and A-Rod are trying to bridge this gap here. There, there's no reason for the best player in franchise history, and I know this this team has been riddled with failed prospects and draft picks and and not all always great players, there's no reason for this guy not to be well, way more involved. Whether it's sometimes KG's fault for being a little bit too cantankerous and being a little bit too Kevin Garnett, I guess, to a, to his own fault, but I think it's imperative that that dude's involved with this franchise going forward. I love that they played, I think it was an old video, right? That video they played at Target Center yeah, late last night. Like, uh, like a 20-year-old video of KG hyping up the crowd, yeah. And that's great. Like, that that stuff should be there more. I know he's been to just a few Wolves games when they show him, you know, the crowd goes wild. But so many Wolves fans, so many people, of, I think, of my age, too, um, that just identify and love Kevin Garnett. I think the younger generation, you know, the fans that are probably in their early 20s or high school kids right now probably obviously don't, 
have any recollection of Kevin Garnett in a Timberwolves uniform, but he is Timberwolves basketball, and there's no reason for him not to be involved in this franchise more. Anthony Edwards has has a similar fire. A- Anthony Edwards is a little bit more of like a happier, fun version because Kevin Garnett was very serious, and, yep. and, and he would rub teammates the wrong way. I think Anthony Edwards is sort of beloved by his teammates, but they both have that same burning fire to want to dominate a game, and they both have basketball vision and... Like I said, they're sort of basketball spiritual animals like in Timberwolves that. uniform. So so there's your pie chart. 70% to the Ant-Man, 10% to Tim Connolly for a great trade midseason that brought Mike Conley and Nikhil Alexander-Walker in. 10% Carl Anthony Towns for a positive contribution. 5% to the combo of Kyle Anderson and Rudy Gobert. And 5% to big brother Kevin Garnett for just like having it. his eye on things. Wolves and so, seven, baby. Wolves and seven. Wolves and seven. Make it happen. Shoes are Let's off. Let's get here. it, guys. Shoes are off. For God's sake. Let's get it. Let's go. Go get it. And even if not, even if it's Nuggets by seventy in Game Five, <laughs> Anthony Edwards is here. He has made the trademark leap in both the regular season and the playoffs. So, uh, all right, you're going to have a pie chart of blame for the Wild. Yeah losing game four. So we'll do that uh, in another episode of Minnesota sports with Mackie and Judd and a crazy weekend of Vikings rumors and interesting mock drafts on purple daily today. So be sure to check that out as well.